Hello, everybody. <sighs> so, <clears throat> I got struck on my channel again for posting something about the coronavirus. Whatever. Um, been gone for a week. They hit me for a week. Oh, oh no, excuse me. Sorry. Keep forgetting I don't need these anymore. Ah. So, been a long week. Last time you guys heard from me, I was giving you guys an update about what was going on in my life. I put some shorts up, but, um, the first, you know, last video I made was about what was going on in my life. Over the week that I've been gone, my mother passed away from breast cancer, and uh, she had breast cancer and skin cancer, but the breast cancer is what did it. Um, she went to the hospital, and she opted for hospice, which anyone who knows about hospice knows what's up. I've been awake all night. This is my... My mom passed away on August 20th, about 3 p.m. I've had friends over every day, even co-workers, who are awesome. And I love dearly, I truly do. They have been with me and won't let me have a moment to myself to be sad. This is my first <clears throat> day on my own. My boss was kind enough to give me two days off. Um, in the security world, it's really hard to get time off, so two days off is a big deal. Um, I'm entering into Sunday, which is the last day I have off before I have to go back to work. And uh, I made a video about hospice and tried to let people know who may not know what hospice is or might be in a situation like I am though they've never really had to deal with the death of a family member that close um, so I'm going to start off with hospice it is very scary it is because they act very differently when they're under the influence of all the different drugs that they're being given to keep them comfortable. Hospice is not a place that you are sent to to recover. Hospice is not a place that you are sent to to get treated. If you have a family member in hospice, the intent of hospice is to pass on. It is to die. That is its purpose. To be kept comfortable drugged up, where you are not even aware of your surroundings, you, you feel no pain. You sleep most of the time. It is where you go for the end. Some people recover and get out of hospice, so don't lose hope. But it is also the last place you go. Sorry if I look like shit also. My eyes probably look all baggy and all that. Been a rough few days. Um, but I want to make this so that people who have never had to deal with these kinds of things that may find this video one day will understand what hospice truly is. Hospice is where they keep you comfortable until your time comes. Now... I immediately, as somebody in a very unique scenario, um, my mom wasn't in the hospital, and I fought for her for years, and she fought, and we tried to fight this. No, my mom stayed in her apartment and let this cancer take her. She didn't want to fight it. She wanted to accept the fate that she believed that God bestowed upon her, and that 
she didn't want to treat it. She didn't want to fight it. She didn't want to do anything about it. She just let it take her. Um, I've been taking care of my mom for the past five years. To the best of my capacity. Um, the last three years, I moved in and I was very hands-on. I was right there. I was living with her in the guest room. Um, I spent the last three years of my life way out of my league. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. The extent of my medical training is basic first aid and personal experience. I did everything I could to keep my mom comfortable, happy, you know, rested, and I'm sure based on the last video I posted, and you looking at my face now, you'll know I am greatly relieved but exhausted. I've spent the last three years of my life getting almost no sleep, working insane hours, um, trying to make money to make do so to support us both in a state in the county that is merciless when it comes to money. Um, losing your mom, the best way that I can describe it, and I don't like describing it to you because I don't want you to lose hope or anything, but giving someone an idea of what to, of the feelings to prepare themselves for can help them, so I decided to make this. When I was a kid, I was in Walmart with my mom one day, and um, I just lost track of her. And my mom lost track of me. And I remember the <clears throat> the terror that flooded through me, thinking, oh my God, I'm never gonna see my mom again because I couldn't find her anywhere. I knew she was in the store somewhere, but I couldn't find her. That childhoodistic terror of not being able to find your mom that's what losing them feels like, but it, it doesn't go away. It doesn't leave. It's a burning pit in the center of your chest that just doesn't go away. And it's painful. And I will tell you, through my personal experiences in life, that pain does not go away. You grow around it. You get used to it. I know one day I'll get used to this pain and it'll go away. In my mind, it'll go away. It'll still be there, but I will become so accustomed to it that I will no longer really recognize it. The same with my divorce when I caught my wife cheating on me. That pain doesn't go away. You learn to live around it until you don't even know it's there anymore. I'm also a guy, so women may process this differently. I don't know, but as a, as a, as a man, I'm telling you this is how it feels, in my perspective of it anyway. Um, so, I would have been posting more, but I got blocked for a week. My mom passed away at 3 p.m. August 20th during music therapy, which I find to be amazing because of something my mom told me about very often when she was in the absolute throes of horrible, horrible pain that she was in all the time, that when she would finally get to sleep, in between the puking and the pain and everything else, she always dreamt about a angel at the end of her bed that would sing to her and play her music and my mom passed away with a musical therapist playing the guitar and singing to her
I didn't cry, which scared me for a while. I have not cried since my mother has died. I didn't cry when my stepdad died. I didn't cry when my grandfather died. Um, shit, last time I cried was probably when one of my pets died. Um, but let's be honest, pets ain't kind of different. Um, I had three years to prepare myself. Some of you don't have that. Some of you, it's unexpected. It's 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 quick. It's it's out of nowhere. I had three years taking care of my mom, with her refusing to go to the hospital and take care of of her problem, to prepare myself. Doesn't hurt any less, but. I had been conditioned to understand the pain that I was going to receive, I guess. Who knows? A week, a month, half a year from now, I might fucking break down in the middle of a fucking Walmart. I don't fucking know. But as it is now, I feel so relieved that the pain is over. That the suffering is over. The puking, the inability to sleep, the pain. The, the, the horrible stuff that my mom went through in this apartment while I spent countless hours with her helping her and trying to comfort her it's over so I have this little thing of relief of being able to finally live my life now that I'm free of this taking care of my mom but I also can't really detach certain parts of me about taking care of my mom I still keep waking up, swearing to God that I heard her call my name. I still keep uh, coming home from work, and I still look into her room, expecting to see her there, and she's not there. It's, it's uh, muscle memory at this point. I know it'll go away. I have a support system. I have friends who have reached out to me and been unimaginably helpful and caring, patient, and just so helpful in this time. I even have co-workers who I knew I was cool with but didn't realize that when they found out that my mom died, they came to my house and comforted me and, and were there for me to whatever, spill my guts or just be there. It is also a testament to how men truly have men's backs. Sexuality aside, political ideology aside, religion aside, I have family that I've never met before in my life. Uncles and cousins that I've never met before that came to my aid and came down to try to be there with me to help me. You're not as alone as you may always think. <clears throat> so, I don't even know if this video is going to post. <laughs> it's the uh, technically the 22nd now. I've been awake all night, can't sleep. I've been drinking incessantly trying to get myself tired well I say incessantly it's only like my second drink but I was out with my friends till like 3 30 in the morning playing uh <laughs> playing games or playing a game called loaded questions it's pretty fun look it up also you know RPing I told you guys in previous videos I'm a nerd I like to RP we were playing but also, if you are going through what I'm going through, take the time to recognize the people who reach out and make the offer of help. Not just the condolences, but the people who reach out and say, if you need me, call me. I'll be there. Hold on to those people. Hold on to them. They're rare. My greatest peace as a Christian man is knowing that my mother is up there dancing in the clouds with our father. 
the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are sitting there with my mom chatting it up. That brings me peace. That brings me comfort. But I just wanted to make this to give you all an update. But also, someday someone might watch this who needs to see this. I can truly look myself in the mirror and know that I did everything that I could to the end. To the last minute, to the last second, I did everything that I could. I never stopped trying, fighting, sacrificing, and even risking my own personal safety in some circumstances to do what I had to do to keep my mom happy, comfortable, feeling loved, and knowing that she was in a safe environment. But I also understand that there are a lot of people out there who don't get that chance. They get that heads up about cancer or whatever, and before they can even wrap their heads around it, they're gone. And I feel for you. But you have to understand, you are a human being. You can only do so much. You can only be so, only be in so many places at once. Give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Anyway, guys, I look forward to getting back to making videos for you now that my ban is over. Whenever this posts is probably when my ban is over. Not even sure how long it's been. I'm pretty sure it's been at least six days, seven days. I think today should be the last day. This should post, I think. But, um... Thank you all for watching my videos, and uh, if you're going through the same thing I'm going through or something similar, do what you can to keep your own conscience clean. Make those sacrifices to be there if you can, because afterwards it will do you so much good. My life has been on hold for five years, taking care of my mom. I don't regret it. I'm not going to sit here and complain or cry or whine about the time that I've lost. Because as far as I'm concerned, it was time well spent. But now, the sky's the limit. I feel like a new chapter's opened in my life. The adventures can now begin, and I hope you all be there with me. Have a good day.